So uh, let's, um, let's have a look at uh, the next instalment of, of um, these studies that we're doing, um, Understanding Our Faith. Um, and so we're continuing on in Special Revelation, uh, another way that God has revealed himself to uh, people in a specific or special way. Um, God hasn't just revealed himself through nature, as uh, Anne prayed earlier, um, but through our co through conscience, through history. Uh, but explicitly, God has revealed himself in three particular ways. Firstly, direct communication from God. Second, God in Jesus, or the incarnation, and scripture. And last time we discovered that uh, we looked at how God revealed uh, himself in direct communication with people, through the prophets, through dreams, through visions, and so on. Um, and even to Isaiah, uh, him actually seeing God. It's pretty impressive stuff. <laughs> um, so today uh, we're looking at the revelation of God in Jesus, the incarnation. That's the technical word for meaning the deity in the flesh. Deity in bodily form. Um, so the Jews, they were looking forward to the day when God's special one, the anointed one, the Messiah, was revealed, but they didn't recognise it when it came. Um, but the kings from the east, this is a very topical, isn't it? <laughs> uh, when did the kings of the east arrive, by the way? Did they? Two years after, two years after absolutely. They met Jesus in the house, not, uh, not in the stable. So uh, <laughs> the nativity plays are all out the wall. <laughs> um, but they, of course, uh, um, the angels appeared to the shepherds. The shepherds went to the stable. Um, and then later on, we have Simeon and Anna in the temple. Um, and then there's John the Baptist. A number of these who recognised that Jesus, um, they recognised who he was. Um, and uh, they, well, whether they really knew is another question, isn't it? How, how well did they know that it was actually God in the flesh? Um, Emmanuel, which is God with us. God with us. And that's really the story from beginning to end. I will talk about overarching themes in scripture. I think that's the grandest of all of them. That God is there at the beginning. He wants to be with his people. There he is walking with in the garden in the cool of the day. And then he sends Jesus. Then he sends his Holy Spirit to be with us. And then we are going to be with him forever. I, I think that's the, the grand scheme of things. Um, um, but this is a great mystery that Jesus is very God and very human. <laughs> uh, and Jesus was here to reveal God. And he is the sum total of the revelation of God, his will, his nature, his person, his character. To look at Jesus is to look at God. And God has revealed himself in the person of his son. Um, and people can have all sorts of ideas of God through nature, through the conscience, through history. You can have all sorts of ideas and we can see that around the world. with different myriads of things that people believe. Um, uh, we, we know something of his creation, so he must be a creator. He's working through history, so he must be a sustainer and controller. Through our consciences, revealing he's the ultimate lawgiver and judge. But we cannot truly know God unless we know him through his son. And God has, in these last days, spoken to us through his son. Without Jesus, we are destined to know God very poorly, uh, rather than know him richly. Um, Without Jesus, we cannot know God, only something about him. Um, and only in Jesus can we know God. This is what it says in John 1, 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, Jesus, who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. Um, yeah, what happened there? <coughs> missing some verses but never mind um, no one has seen God at any time yet this he was God in the flesh uh, with them Jesus came to make God known and uh, not only did he come to make him known but to declare that he himself is God and I'll re-emphasize that and re-emphasize that uh, notice that Jesus is everywhere yet yeah, when Jesus was here on the earth he was there but here it says the only begotten son who's in the bosom of the father He's in heaven as well. So Jesus is in every place at every time. 
despite the fact he is in the flesh. It's a, a thing that we got to grasp that he's still God. <laughs> he is still everywhere, in every place. This is why he was able to see Nathaniel under the tree. I saw you there, but he wasn't anywhere near him. <laughs> so he saw him. Um, and uh, we see that God's characteristics are given to Jesus. All things were made through him, as we just read, uh, but he's also the creator. <coughs> Scripture elaborates on this further in Colossians 1. Uh, this is what it says in uh, Colossians 1, 15 to 17. <coughs> he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. So this Jesus is the creator. He is the word that was spoken. Um, he's the one who's in control. Um, and, to, and more than that, he is the image of the invisible God. Uh, to say that he is the image of God is to say that in him, the nature and being of God has been perfectly revealed. The invisible now becoming visible. Some of this might be a little bit general, but, <laughs> but, uh, but we can get it, can't we? We're grasping this, uh, how great Jesus is. And, um, and one of the core passages today is this one. In Hebrews chapter 1, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. That's what we saw last week, that uh, God spoke to the prophets. He spoke to Abraham, spoke to Moses. He spoke to uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel and all the rest. Um, but and, and there's a kind of a gradual revelation of God going on. And now he's fully revealed in Jesus Christ. He has in these last days, verse 2, spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a much more excellent name than they. Now, clearly, Jesus is God. Um, and Jesus has the other attributes of God. He is life. He is life. He has life in himself. He is self-sustaining. When Jesus died, uh, who was involved in his resurrection? Do you know the answer? I'll cover that one day. Well, God the Father was involved. Jesus himself was involved. And the Holy Spirit was involved. Uh, he had this authority from the Father that he can lay down his life, but he can also take it back up again. It was within the power of Jesus himself to raise himself from the dead. Um, he is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is the truth. He is love, eternal. He's everywhere. He is with you always. <laughs> he has all knowledge, for he knows the thoughts of men. He has all power in that all authority has been given to him. And in Revelation it says this, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty. So Jesus is the Almighty. They can't be two Almighties, can they? Because one's got to be more Almighty than the other. <laughs> so Jesus is also the Almighty. Um, uh, and so there's the evidence that Jesus and the Father are one along with the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the Godhead, um, yet in three persons. We'll cover this later down the road as well. But this is a, a mystery in a way. We can't fully comprehend it. God is one, but in three persons. Um, and we know that our consciences can work out that there is a lawgiver to whom we have to give an account of ourselves. <clears throat> but it's the Father, he judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. So whom, who's going to be our judge? Jesus is going to be our judge. All worship and honour belong to Jesus. All should honour the Son as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. And the disciple uh, Thomas, he came to this uh, conclusion, didn't he? Uh, when 
finally, Jesus appeared to him as well. Doubting Thomas, we call him. I, I think that's really unfair. <laughs> the poor guy. <laughs> he wasn't in the room when Jesus appeared to the other disciples. And, uh, and also we call him Doubting Thomas, as if, like, uh, we wouldn't have doubted. <laughs> oh, yeah, somebody's come to yeah, the is raised from the dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, what did he say? Uh, Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And he got it absolutely right. Jesus didn't correct him, but received it. Um, and there were others who, in the gospel who bowed to him and worshipped him. Um, and, uh, and he received their praise. Um, and in, in John 14, verse 9, uh, Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So when we say, uh, you know, no one has seen God, if you've seen Jesus, you have seen God. Well, what a privilege it must have been for the people of that time, at least if you recognised him for who he was. Um <clears throat> He and the Father are one, the invisible, now visible. And all this proves that Jesus is, is God. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the true God. Um, and the revelation which he has made of himself was the manifestation of God. What's it say in Colossians 2, 9? For in him, in Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You know, when we have Jehovah's Witnesses and things, these are the verses which we need to be going to in Scripture. Because even in their Bible, they have these words. And they try to explain these things away, but scripture is so clear. Jesus is God, there's no escape from this. Yeah. Um, so the words of Christ are the words of God. The works of Christ are the works of God. The love, mercy, tenderness, the forgiving grace, as well as the holiness, severity and power is man manifested by Christ, we're all manifestations of what Christ, what God is like. You know, we're going through the Gospels and we're looking at what Jesus is doing. This is the work of God. And we have to remember, we're, we're trying, we want to follow in his footsteps. We want to become more like him. That's the aim of the Christian life. Um, and we, um, we know that although he is infinite and absolute, he can think, act and will. He can love and hate. He can hear prayer. He can forgive sin. We can forgive sin but God alone. And then we can have fellowship with him as one can commune with another. Isn't that amazing that we can communicate with him? And he listens to us. <laughs> That's even more surprising. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, to know him is our goal. Um, all things have been... Well, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to re reveal him. And we see glimpses of this in the Gospels. It kind of is hidden from the disciples in a way. You see that they're kind of grasping, who is this Jesus? He still storms and things like this. And, and then one day uh, Jesus asks the question, well, who do you think I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Yeah. And uh, uh, Jesus answered and blessed him, blessed are you Simon Bar Jonah. Bar, bar, by the way, in Jewish means son of, okay, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And these were amazing times of revelation. This is what we're talking about. God revealing himself. Uh, and sometimes people like Peter will get, gain a glimpse. And then, of course, a little, little later on in the same chapter, we find that uh, Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You know, so, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, that was uh, from the great heights to the great depths. Of <laughs> Poor man. Uh, I feel like I'm a bit like Peter, a bit impetuous at times. Um, <clears throat> the people were amazed at what Jesus could do with the miracles, the forgiveness of sin, and Peter, James and John, they, they witnessed Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. How he was suddenly changed and then all his glory. And they couldn't, they could not cope with that, of course. And they were scared out of their wits. And, um, and how could they not know that this was God who was walking among them? 
And John, the one who saw him on the mountain, wrote these words. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld <coughs> his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John beget, beheld his glory right up there on the mountain. Saw him for what he really is. And knew full well that God had been made known in Jesus. You know, there, there are those who say we cannot know God. And I'll, I'll cover that with atheists and uh, agnostics. Uh, <coughs> but this is untrue. It's untrue. Um, however, it is true that we cannot know all that there is to know about God. That would make us a bit like God, to be honest. <laughs> um, but God has revealed himself in certain ways. And one of the ways is obviously through Jesus. Um, and for this direct communication, we have the Old Testament as testament to that. Um, and he's chosen to reveal himself to us in Jesus. And Jesus has revealed himself to us. When we read the stories of Jesus, these are the stories of God. He's revealed himself uh, at times in Old Testament as the angel of the Lord. You now these theophanies, that technical word, theophanies, uh, that's God revealing himself before he was born. Remember, he revealed himself as a man to Abraham. There was three men who saw Abraham and two of them were angels and one of them was God. That was Jesus. Uh, you, you have, uh, uh, oh, it was Tom, Tommy, I think you talked about uh, uh, Daniel with the three men in the fiery furnace. And there was one like the son of God. Well, he was the son of God <laughs> there in the fiery furnace. Um, and, and there are lots of other examples, like uh, the commander of the army to Joshua. Um, so, so many of these in the Old Testament. I mean, who was walking in the garden in the cool of the day? Must have been Jesus. So he's revealed himself in the Old Testament, um, but in Jesus Christ, was uh, he was living a life in the flesh among ordinary people. God with us. And this God, our God, he suffered and died for people. He died for the whole world, past, present and future, in, for all people. Uh, God came to earth, took on flesh and paid the price for you and me. Jesus is the manifestation of the love of God. God is love. And by this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. It's really important stuff. He's, our, he's, not, he's not just, he's God, but he's also come as an example to us about the way that we have to live. And, uh, yeah. So uh, let me read this. This is a, a quote from a book um, which I haven't got the author's name for some reason, Systematic Theology. Uh, anyway, uh, God could not uh, draw nearer, nor could he disclose more clearly the wonders of his person, the perfections of his purpose, nor the depths of his love and grace than he has done in the incarnation, which in the scope of its purpose embraced the life, teachings, example, death and resurrection of the eternal son, the second person of the Godhead. Head. God has spoken to us through the prophets, but now he has spoken to us by his son. Now, the, the prophets, they were just human messengers. But Jesus is not just a messenger. <laughs> um, Jesus' death, resurrection and ascension show us that God is speaking to us. And Jesus has purged our sins and now sits in glory, awaiting the day when he will return in glory. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, if people don't recognise Jesus now, they will recognise him one day. And that one day will be too late then. <laughs> we need to recognise him now and bow our knees now and, uh, and follow him as we ought to. So God has revealed himself in and through Jesus, showing us who he is and what he's like. This is what God wants to do. He wants to reveal himself to us. And when we're looking at Jesus, we are looking at the Father. Jesus is the ultimate revelation of God. Why? Because he is God. And next time, maybe next week, God willing, we'll see, um, we will look at the last of these special revelations, which is scripture. So, 